I will see you on the other side. Thank you very much, Bach. Well, Grace, we're having up against Alpha Etheris. We're starting on Cafe. And an interesting thing to note that it's not just this map either, but on Cafe, on Oregon, the team who got to choose their starting side, they chose attack every time. And on maps like Cafe and Oregon, you never, you never really expect that. You don't, especially when it gets to the fact that you want to get those defensive rounds in. Again, like, the idea is that the defense is the easiest side to start on. You know, the timer is working in your favor. We often say time's the sixth defender. Uh, you know, you're the one working against the timer when you're on the attack. Sometimes it can show a little bit of confidence from teams when they do choose to start on these attacks. So far, though, the global's going in the attack ban so far, Crow. Yeah, Dokubi and Lion, they don't want to deal with. Understandable. On a map like Cafe, it does tend to live and die off of those uh, roams, those extensions, with, as I, would, I would say, with the, except, uh, with the exception of, you know, the top floor site, Barn Cockpit, because you're already on the top. Bar, Yano, Lion and Dokubi really help lock those roamers down. And so mm. with both of these teams being hyper-aggressive, like we saw yes uh, yesterday, like we saw last playday, and very fluid, don't mean the Lion are going to put a big hamper on that. Now, Warden from Alpha Etheris, allow me to go back into the records. Who on this team played the most Warden? I believe it was Draw. I think Draw and Runner. Yeah, certainly so. Again, Draw likes to play pretty aggressively, so Flash Utility is pretty useful against him. Uh, a lot of people just prefer to run Warden for the last, like, you know, six to eight months anyway. I think the interesting thing will be if Alpha do start rolling out that Ying, and I can see that they already are. So already this is like, okay, is that ban more of a kind of approach of the fan that they know that they use it? Or is that more of a case of, you know, Ying and Cafe at the moment? It's a very nice, com com uh, you know, combination. I often call Cafe the gravity full map. You start the top nine times out of ten, you work your way down. Again, having that kind of flash utility in your pocket, it's a really easy way to clear out a lot of the presence of these roamers. Yeah, and so not. I think not only is it uh, a ban for Alpha Etheris to eventually take advantage of that Ying on their side, it's also to maybe sit, draw, and runner down a little bit, not allow them to just fly around the map with the 1.5 MPX, because as you mentioned, people... People love the gun, also takes a shield off the board, so it's all around good band, especially against a team like this. It's going to be reading room up first for Revan, though, typically the tertiary site, though you yeah, have seen a drop off when it comes to uh, Kitchen. Actually, it depends on the team. Some teams don't like bar anymore, and then some teams don't like Kitchen anymore. Some teams even play mining. I hope Revan end up being one of those teams, but as you can see, they are going to extend upstairs as you almost always do on this site. The Jaeger's probably going to be up here. I imagine probably the Legion and the Oryx as well. Mm. Revan have certainly a, a lot of good guns at their disposal. They do. At the same time, they've got two operators there where if they, they die, the utility's pretty much gone. So we'd hope they'd be a little bit more resourceful on how they want to play in terms of positioning. <laughs> certainly, again, especially when we consider that runners on that Solus, how important Solus can be, just denying that drone, denying that information game. Alpha and I are going to bring to the table, I think rightfully so as well. We are very cautious about any little window peaks that may come through. It's going to be a little bit of a slow approach to the building, Crow. I like this open open top red wall. It's going to make it a lot more dangerous for anyone to drop that hatch. It forces Alpha Etheris to have to clear piano as well if they want to start pushing these hatches. The sludge is on the roof, so looks like that answer is going to be yes, unless... No, okay. I thought it was about. I thought they were about to have a cocktail take. That would have been really weird. I mean, the reason why you take the cocktail take is to try and avoid the utility setup in piano. Uh, but it can be dangerous, especially when it comes to runouts. That's why they're nomading it off just in case. And Alvo, Raw's playing a little bit risky here, to be honest, Crow. If someone is going to go on the scene, they could have a good chance of taking him a little bit off guard here, but. Now, Revan aren't doing anything too silly sausages. I think there's about to be a little bit of an encounter here. I think already we could see that Revan are pretty hungry for these opening picks. There's a peek from draw into heaven. 
that the uh, Heaven player quickly backed off from the C4 outside from Sam. That will unfortunately be wasted, not even a point of damage being dealt from the Tumbo. But the run out coming through, oh. it's Sam with the first pick onto the Nomad, but instantly refragged by Nade as Runner lost that entry engagement. Another one from Joe, though, will put the man advantage back in his team's favor. And another from Draw to shut down Jay. The Ying is still alive. Not anymore. I spoke too soon. <laughs> Sorry, Nade. No caster's curse. And that leaves Fatal alone, who's got one pick for his team. You need to find three more. Three more indeed. Again, if you can isolate these into 1v1s, it's the best chance of coming out here alive. He's going to grab the diffuser. You're going to need to consider the information that he is going to be dealt. But there we have it. Rafe is just going to shut that down. That's Rev from getting round number one under their belts. Certainly a good omen, we would hope. Hey, getting uh, three, four kills off that cocktail hold. Alpha Theris took a really long time to try and set up for the clear. It seemed like maybe the Ying was going to be the answer, but she was more focused on that uh, piano side of things. Which, you know, he and uh, he and Fatal got some kills off of. Unfortunately, everyone else was rather unsuccessful. Joe, who was holding the white stairs, caught Matumbo on that rappel. Uh, I think it was Jay got caught by draw on the heaven rappel. There were a lot of there was a lot of separation for Alpha Etheris there. And while you know two players got their own picks, everyone that wasn't with that Ying couldn't make anything happen from that cocktail side of things. So, Revan, very nicely done. Joe, with two kills, starting the series out right. Starting it right indeed. Again, we're going to Valkyrie out now for a little bit of information. This is an interesting thing for me too. Valkyrie's always banned on Cafe nine times out of ten. Uh, so it's really nice to see that actually left on the board. The fact that they're able to get that information especially if alpha are about to take this top down you know this is a question on everyone's lips right now will they go through bakery or will they do the top down take well they've got a buck and a jackal so i'm assuming that clear. it's going to be mm. a full clear they dropped the sledge for him but i mean you still got the nades on the iana you do lose one set though so you're not as or your nade ability i guess is going down a little bit they might, ooh, they might be top down into white though. <laughs> Joe just sprinted outside on ADS. Mm, he certainly did, and that's going to give Alpha the opening pick going in their favor. But that could have rustled the jibbies a little bit too, Crow. This is the thing to remember. It could maybe delay its Alpha's approach a little bit. They want to get more information under their belts. If they see those kind of aggressive players, it's all about the mental game, right? Hmm. If they get this information, though, they could see that there are, like, three people on the white side of things, leaving only one real anchor. They do have all of top floor for free. And that, for example, is why the Thermite now wants to try and move in. Their next goal, take out Sam. There's a drone on him from Bottom Brown. There is no one restaurant, as the attack is now cleared. The shield has also been cleared. But Sam is not falling back. He really wants to challenge Garage. He thinks he can get the drop on Ivan. There's also someone upside down repelled on that restaurant window. This could be difficult for Sam. Draw lightning load, however, Jay will fall. But now Ivan is distracted by the presence on site. So I think Sam may stay alive for a little bit longer. This is anything that Pinch needs to come through. The jumping through double window needs to happen. Naven needs to try and go for that push. But again, when you've got these crossfires, Crow, that's where the difficulty is. Fatal, however, has found himself a bit up close and personal. And for a little bit of a ring around the rosy moment. But again, this could be quite uncomfortable. Draw getting another one there. Nade falls down. Rambo taking the damage. No immediate trade. Yes, Rafe takes on Ivan as well. Alpha slowly getting picked off one by one. The Tumbo and Fatal desperately trying to cling on. There we have it. Sam's patient finally pays off. And poor Fatal is left in a one versus four. Of course, they do have that Jackal utility, so maybe get some live pings. 25 seconds or so to go. What do you make, Crow? I don't think he's winning this. <laughs> Bold claim. Also, where is Draw? Oh, he's upstairs. So he pretty much... All right. Draw single-handedly dealt with the upstairs take. That was a really... Okay, 
So typically, when a team goes for a top-down clear like this, it is all hands on deck. All five are starting on the roof. They're working their way down. Only then, once you are confident that there's no one left on the upstairs, all the flanks are covered, then you go for the white take with the thermite, the ash, clear the shield, what have you. Alpha Theris didn't do that. They tried to split their manpower, and they paid the price. There wasn't enough people to deal with draw. I mean, a 2v1, while disadvantageous, is not unwinnable, as we just saw. He takes out those two players, and Alpha and Theris are still trying to clear white, and they haven't made any headway. You want to know why? Because Sam has a cross. Sure, he doesn't have a shield, but he's still got a Cade playing Whiskey. And because Draw is upstairs, the Cade knows that no one's going to flank him from Brown. The reception door isn't open yet. And the Jackal, who was trying to come down red to alleviate that, is stopped by a player, I believe it was a runner on the Wamai, pressuring Small Bay. So he can't swing either. Alpha and Theris spread themselves way too thin. They, if they're going to go for that, they need to focus on one thing at a time. Very similarly to, to a map like Oregon, Cafe is very checklisty, which at first yeah. is why I yeah. thought maybe Revan were not going to do that well on this map because of how checklisty is. Now, of course, their attacking half is still yet to come, but so far they're taking full advantage of Alpha Theris' over-eagerness. It was taking advantage of the fact that even if they are going for these aggressive peaks, I think Alpha are aware of it. So they know that Alpha are going to be a bit more hesitant. They're going to be taking their time. And then they're taking advantage of the fact that Alpha are taking their time. So saying that, Jay destroying these castle barricades early. That could be a pretty decent thing for Alpha to have under their belts. Again, the fact that you've got to apply all that window pressure towards Piano and start to clear that out nice and quickly. We got this ying again too. Yeah. Which on bar, uh, it could be good depending on how they use it. If they used it like they did with that uh, that top floor take on reading, if they do that again. I can assure you that it is going to fail miserably. They've also got to get around both the Wamai and the Jaeger from Runner and Wrath. That's going to be tough. So already, if you want to use this Ying, here's the checklist: take piano. If you want people on the cocktail repels, you have to uh, establish repel presence. Burn all the ADSs and all the discs, and only then will she be useful. I like this from Draw too, the fact that he's getting a bit aggressive there, but he is being sensible about it, right? He is pulling back at this point. Okay, I've lost a lot of health here. I'm not really going to win this engagement right now, but I'm going to reposition myself. I'm going to give that information to my team. I'm going to use the ability here. Work out where some of these players are. I'll work out where these flanks are coming from. Here come the Candelas, though. No immediate push. Wait, Raquel. That's... That is unhinged. With the Yink Candela coming in, blinding everybody in uh, by pallets and by cocktail, Ivan repels through the white window and capitalizes on it. And now he's got bathroom control. Jay gets a follow-up. Joe's alone. In a one versus five, it's not very often that we see Joe as the last alive, but he's unable to do much as Jay gets the final kill from Heaven. Two kills for him, two for Ivan, and a flawless round. And again, that's the really gorgeous thing about them having that Wharton ban on the table, right? They're able to make plays like this. Just fully go in with the Candelas, swing into Corridor. Again, no one was holding Corridor. No one was holding planks, as an example. It's pretty much a freebie. You see the opportunity, you take it. I can't remember the last time that I saw someone swing through that window. Actually, that's not true. I can't remember the last time I saw someone swing through that window and not die, like, instantaneously. That was a, that no, was a exactly. great setup from Alpha. This is it. They didn't, at that point, they didn't even need piano control. Like, they didn't need to be in there. Mm. They just needed to make sure that no defender was there. Exactly. They did that. Exactly. Everyone's bunched up. The perfect targets for those Candelas. That's exactly it. All they needed was, you know, maybe a bit of pressure on white. Granted, the pressure from the window may have been preventing that. But again, just having even Plank's pressure a little bit, holding a bit more aggressively. You know, Revan, they're players that can get aggressive. Um, Again, some of the way they're playing this aggression can be a little bit OTT at times, but the energy is there, the fort is there, so to speak.
Now, how do Alpha Ferris take top four? Because it's got to be different. They know it's got to be different than, uh, than that first round. They have a different lineup. Instead of uh, Zoe Ash Sledge, they have Zoe Ash Iyana. But still the same amount of nades. They're still bringing Ying. They've had Ying three out of their four rounds now with a, as we'd call that, a 33.3 repeating success rate. Why? The issue is, is again, if you want to play it from that middle floor, you want to maybe go for the Verti, you've got to deal with a lot of Romas here. But speaking of dealing with Romas, Draw is going to fall down, so that's at least something. But even has taking a fair bit of damage in, re in return. And there we have it, Joe getting spotted out too. So Fatal's going to try and back off probably a little bit. Again, I think maybe the initial plan was to try and get that vertical play, try and use those nades underneath and clear it that way. Even, however, all the way in freezer already. It's a little bit of a hold just because of those reinforcements. Oh! Joe and Rave coming through, though, going a little bit large there. The stuff we love to see. Alpha, however, the stuff we love to see is them getting these trades. There's at least one, even taking out Rafe. Joe falls too. He even can pick up this diffuser. I think he's getting a few warning shots from below. The verticality <laughs> on both sides, bro. What is happening? So I like and I don't like the setup from off of Ferris. It's kind of a tough one. They were able to get in piano and kill draw. That was impressive. But they didn't have someone pinching this Jaeger from white. The Ash looked like she was trying to get there, but mm. Nade kind of pulled the trigger a little too early. I mean, not only that, but the Candela didn't go off because it was caught by an ADS and he still swung. That allowed uh, the time from Joe to get into position uh, useless and kill the guy Heaven. So lose a couple picks, but Matumbo had the cutoff. Joe, Wrath was still down in the engagement. Joe was killed by that cutoff. And now the plant is going down because they have the vertical. Runner gets caught by the laundry drop. Sam with a quick refrag. It's a one versus two. Both players are downstairs. This is still incredibly winnable, but Fatal's made his way out. Sam, maybe on a fool's errand here, thinking that surely there must be top floor coverage. There's no one here for him to find. Both players inside pillar, which you can get vertical on. Sam now spots the case. Does he have info? It sounds like there's pings, but I don't know from what team that's on. Sam makes his way into the site, not spotting either of these attackers. Look at how passively they're playing this, and finally the swing comes through at the same time as the concussion. Matumbo with the last kill, and Alpha Atheris tie us up 2-2. Two two. Information, information, information. I think that is the main point there, right? The issue is there too, because they didn't know about how top floor was looking uh, on the defense, they were kind of like, okay, well... The plant's suddenly down. I don't think they realized, first of all, plant was going down. The Solus utility was on the board. They could have used that to see that, uh, again, for the, for, the, for the way that you would hold to pull off that collapse. If you knew that they were all going for it, maybe that's the point where you send the Solus upstairs. You kind of play for that plant denial on the verticality. They did not have the information, Crow. And that's the main issue with that round. Alpha Wood is able to go get all that control and just go for a really clean and swift execute. Granted, there were some nasty casualties in the meantime. Especially when you're in like a two versus three, you need to have the information. And maybe this is where those kind of information operators need to come in a little bit more. Again, bringing the Valkyrie out again could be a really good shout. Or again, even mm -hmm. just using the Solus utility to advantage. Don't, don't tunnel vision too much around these gunfights. Use that utility that you have in your own pocket. Or continue not doing that and lose more defenses. And this is it, Crow, right? Losing these defenses. Alpha on the less favorable... Remember, this is Cafe as well. Less favorable mm -hmm. side on that attack. Alpha already going two to two. This is looking incredible for them right now. I'm scared for and Revan. How, uh, and with how Revan looked on Oregon on their attacks, mm. the more rounds Alpha Theris wins here, the more dangerous it becomes for Revan. Speaking of dangerous... Mm. Oh... All right, you could tell Joe really wanted to run out there. I'm very happy he didn't. There were like three <laughs> people waiting for him, so good on Joe. We'll be able to fall back. Looks like he's going back down to the site. Solus Utility being used, seeing that they are above the hatch indeed. Drone coming in, but not clearing all the way down red. And they didn't see him. Now they do, oh, but it's far too no. late. Fatal's our first casualty as Alpha Theris 
the information game that we were just talking about that was so good in the previous two rounds, not there in the first minute of here. No, and you've really got to be careful again. If you give draw an inch, he will take a mile, rightfully so. You know, he uses that sort of utility, sees the jackal, and just goes for it. Opening kick, going favor of Revan. Can they convert that? We'd assume Sam has actually switched onto a smoke as well, so a lot of time burn could potentially come through. Depends if they can stay alive for long enough. I've been making good leeway as well. Pressure potentially about to come down white, slowly but surely too. And soon Nade will hopefully join Avon for this verticality. Once they start to apply it towards Freezer again. Very simplistic, oh, but it's working. Shield gone. Sam's on smoke this time, not frost. So if need be, he can play close on the store with the shotgun and nobody is getting past him. He can also delay so much more time in the hallway and in freezer. I'm sure he's got support from Whiskey as well. Ooh. And oh, the fuck! Coming into play, downs Joe, but just narrowly cannot get the finisher. Matumbo, the next casualty as Wrath finds his head. In comes the Ash, just right on into the site, but there's too many bodies for him to look at. Runner will be credited with the kill. Joe is still on the floor. Sam takes a buttload of damage, but Draw finishes his only teammate, oh. and there it is. Revan with a flawless again because Alpha and Theris just don't know how to clear white. We are having difficulty controlling that VIP, really, aren't they? It's uh, an interesting one at times to observe. But again, I, I realistically, Crow, if you're alpha, you're not feeling that worried. Like, let's be honest. Again, two to three right now. You're on the attack on cafe. It's like, okay, fair enough. You know, Revan aren't taking it away too much. Maybe if it gets to about two, four, that's when the pressure might get a little bit higher. But if alpha can end this on a free free split, that's going to be looking very decent for them when they go into their own defense. Mm. Which, by the way, I am predicting is going to be just as aggressive. We've seen a lot of aggressive moments from, you know, Joe. We've seen a lot of aggressive moments from Sam at times. We've certainly seen aggressive moments from Draw as well. Alpha are also very aggressive players, but they just seem at the moment a bit more coordinated. And coordinated aggression is pretty much impossible to stop at, you know, even in the best of times. Well, they looked a little more coordinated in the rounds that they won. Certainly so. Better yeah, than last they week. Coordinated <laughs> in those, they did not look coordinated in those white takes, but they don't have to worry about that now. It's back to reading where they just won. Bit of an operator switch up as well. Runner, who was previously on that, uh, Oh no, he was on the Solus. I was thinking of Draw. Drawx, who was on the Oryx, is now Malusi. Mm. So trying to slow down that entry game from Alpha Aetheris. That was so quick on the top floor. Maybe even site info too. If it's right next to like that pillar door, they could have info on when the plant is going down. The only thing I don't really like about it is if a lot of those Banshees are placed on the site, Alpha Aetheris can just kind of deal with that using the vertical extension. Um, but that does rely on them actually getting in there. My worry here is that, unlike their last reading fireplace defense, there's no Jaeger. They've got Valkyrie, so yay info, but this Ying is going to have a heyday. I think for me personally, it's more of a, oh, oh. no, draw, really? Okay, draw's going for the nade, he's going for the run out. Will it land? Oh, it gets taken out there by Ivan. Close but no he's cigar just draw. There. The things we love to see punished for this aggression. I've been certainly having a lot of these players number six kills on the board. A little bit scrappy on both sides. Certainly sailing away with a lot of these opening picks. Tends to be the one that was... gets into sight a little bit first too. That was definitely a bit of a, a, a why are you there moment. You know, <laughs> a minute into the round and he's sitting on top of that platform. Joe, the next player to fall as Fatal picks him up. In comes the Heaven Repel as long with the Candelas. Matumbo eats some damage, and there's a flank from the Solus, but Rudder, he's a whiffa. But he hasn't paid the price just yet. He's still got one for himself. SMG 11 out now hunting for the player in Cigar, but he gets away, drops down, oh, but no, Ivan. Ivan's there on Heaven. A third kill for the Iana, and Sam's left. All alone. Every single one of his teammates dying on the extension or trying to help it out at the very least. No C4 in pocket either, so no freebie. He's going to have to take all four of these gunfights. And Alpha Theris will have a whole minute to play with. There's one. Ivan now dead, but he can't turn on to the second. 
The info fed to Fatal and the kill comes through. Alpha Atheris with a tie half. Yeah, free free split. Not looking great for Revan at the moment, but if you're an Alpha fan, certainly you're doing a little cheer right now because they're going onto the defensive side. And as we've said, this is where things get a lot more favorable for them. Speaking of favorable, I think, you know, the last round in terms of operator picks for Revan, I think it was a good shout to start changing things up again. I did notice throughout the rounds, you know, they were taking the Oryx and the Solus for at least two of those operator picks. The issue with that crow, of course, is if those operators die, that utility isn't left on the board for the rest of the players to use. Perhaps that's where Revan needs to start being a little bit more resourceful. You know, okay, we're losing a lot of these rounds based on our own lack of information. Why are we taking operators that if they die, we have nothing to use there? Maybe we need to start taking things like the Valk a little bit more. Um, again, moving to the Malusis was a pretty good shout because that can be pretty good at getting the information just from the sound cue alone nine times out of ten. And even delaying that execute if they do finally sneak their ways into sight. The amount of times that Ivan has snuck his way, by the way, not only into sight, but into really annoying places. Revan having caught off guard. Uh, and rightfully so, you know, Ivan himself taking every single engagement he possibly can. He is not afraid right now. He is having a ball with this game. It is very entertaining to watch. Hey, and a 3k in the previous round, and now we're seeing a, a very different defense coming out from Alpha Theris. So, they're starting off with mining, first of all. The least played side on the map. They're not afraid. <laughs> They've got a Goyo for delay. They've got a Vigil to a Rooney, who I'm very surprised we didn't see at all from Revan. Bit of a, a Hail Mary toss from Joe after the barricade was open, and that that wastes an aid. Such as EMPs? And now IQ's dead. Oof. Runner taking out Nade, punishing him for his own aggression. Yeah, the EMPs and Sledge, you know, Cafe, it's so destructible. Yes, I would prefer they had the nades right now. The EMPs, though, maybe it's just to, again, clear a lot of this util. It's just a shame that they're missing out on more vertical usage there. Sledge, of course, you know, top to bottom use mostly. Uh, if you take those nades, you can actually do the underneath nade kills, the things we love to see. Bit of an it's got to be one. a mistake. Like, that's got to be a misclick. Potentially. Because if you want EMPs, you would drop, I imagine, the Ash or the IQ and take like a Lion. Oh wait, Lion's banned. Lion's banned, I'm Doka's banned, that's the issue. You could take an Osa. Osa's good on Cafe. You could take, uh... Who the hell else has EMPs? We see it so it's usually just like Lion and Osa, so... Or, uh, Lion and Doke. I actually can't remember who else has EMPs. I think the main issue for me personally is that... You need to get the use out of the EMPs if that is a serious pick. And granted, you can use that on the external, but the way that the map is built, it really denies you that use. Oh, gorgeous shot there! Fatal coming through, Joe is going to fall, so no more Intel Utility. Runner fitting in with his name well, running across the top floor here, looking for the cheeky scalps of alpha can't quite find anyone just yet again this verticality needs to come through a bit more draw speaking of which it's going to take down ivan but again still has these two emps in pocket so i think with right crow maybe it was a little bit of a misclick there i was thinking though if they do want emps i guess the only like other viable option would be osa so i mean you know what whatever unfortunately though sam has to drop right on into sight he has no info the goyo takes him out fatal has been down though it's a 1v2, this is not unwinnable, but Matumbo will put him in the dirt long range with the SMG-11. Oh, I want to see the shot. Yeah, it wasn't as clean as I thought it would be, but still a round win for Alpha Atheris. Taking the lead now. And this was my concern. I'm hoping Revan can pull it back a little bit. But Alpha, if they sail away with this. I think realistically for me personally, again, if Alpha win here, Crow, it's just going to cement a lot of things for me. Alpha were already looking very, very strong. Uh, one could argue one of the favorites to win the entire thing, even if it's too premature to say that right now. But on paper, Revan, it's such a good team. It's just, again, as I said, there's no iron teamwork. They need to cement things just a little bit more. They need to be a bit more careful with these operator picks, the utility they're bringing. 
think the IQ pick's pretty nice. Again, you get a lot of information. You can be safe with how you're gathering that information as well. You don't have to be directly, you know, on the other side of the wall. You can kind of do it from that external. Go on the rappel, give an overview of how the site is looking. Feed that information to your teammates before you guys make the plan to go in and, well, get the job done. I'm glad you uh, were able to explain that. Only for them to not bring IQ anymore. Love that for me. Love that for me. <laughs> that's why. That's why I've completely stopped talking about operators, like until, until pick phase is done, because that happens to me so much. I remember one time they were bringing like a one team was bringing, bringing like a cheeky strat with like Monty, Lion, Doke. Like I talked all about it, and then every single one of them switched off. I was so sad. That's it. I like the, uh, the switch from mining to reading, too. So they already know that Revan's top floor take. Not great. Mm. Or Revan are going to have to do it again. I think a nade on that pulse could be quite a formidable force. Once again, Especially not with no IQ anymore. Well, exactly. Especially with no IQ on the table. And again, it's not just about the case of, okay, I can be underneath you. Maybe we have Jay or Nade or Matumbo for our C4. It's the fact that even on the external walls, when they're repelling, that information is constantly being fed depending on when Nade decides to plonk himself. Where is he? All right. Uh, Matumbo was unaware that the attack has pushed all the way into the top floor. So the take was left a lot to be desired in the last round, but it was very swift here. Not nearly as much from the defense uh, contending for the control. So after Matumbo's death, that's kind of it. They do have to worry about the pulse, as we've mentioned. That C4 potential is not to be understated. And uh, now maybe it is. Nade goes down to Joe. Two kills for the Iana. Jay has uh, put his C4 down as a pre-placed. Probably just waiting for the vert. That kind of sucks for Joe. Getting caught in his clone. So they take one kill back, but draw and Dre, J, uh, draw and J. That was a tongue twister. Trade blows. Now a minute left for Revan to continue the vertical game and set up for their exit. Ooh. Speaking of executes, there we go. A four versus three now, even. It's going to have to hold them down. Ooh. There's one. The pan is denied a little bit for now. They do have to fall back just because of this aggression. They don't want to have to risk losing more lives. Nate's coming out in a bid to pull him back. This looks like it's going to be a little bit of a retake situation. It's the pre-fire. There we have it. Draw takes him down. Revan at least scrambling around there. It would have been pretty bad if they let Ivan go on a little bit of a tear. Putting two picks for Joe as well. Instrumental. Only killing the, the one guy who was... It wasn't even really contesting the top floor anymore. It was very, very light. Hanging out on white stairs, looking for a fallback. But Joe catches him and kills the Pulse too. As he and the, I think it was uh, Pulse and Malusi were just repeatedly challenging white stairs over and over. And eventually Joe got the better of them before he got refragged. And that takes so much information off the board. Alpha Thirst now could not tell when they were going for execute. Couldn't try and counter that vertical destruction with those C4s uh, as reliably, that is. Because they still had a couple C4s left in pocket and that Pulse and the Goyo. Mm. He was just able to get back to site. You know, they, they could have had something where they could have killed Draw, who, by the way, was an instrumental member of that attack. I think getting uh, two kills through four, if I'm not mistaken. Right, was it two? Two or three? I believe it was, but speaking of three, Fatal, Ivan, and Matumbo all going on operators. So again, this is a point I made earlier. You die and your team can't use that utility. So this is where, again, if, if Revan kind of use their utility wisely and maybe they take the pace a little bit slower this time, they're able to catch off some of this aggression from Alpha. It's going to be a pretty awkward site to defend. Granted, you do have the Warmai Magnets and you have those ADSs. There's presumably in positions where you can deal with maybe some of these nade games, but... You've got Selma's on the board to open the wall. Nothing to deny it at this point. So you can always just use that to open up more lines of sight if you do get that piano control. I'd say that's a risky setup, to be honest, Crow. Yeah, I mean, we've seen teams do it before. Like, we saw Six Karma have a really good piano hold, but that was with a zombie up. 
exactly. She is she is not here. Claymore's on the window. There is someone on that red uh on those red stairs from the defense who could run out. But if they do, of course they'll get caught by those lasers. Matumbo spots someone on the rappel. This could be a very easy kill from White. If Ivan or Jay decide to go for it. actually having a little bit of patience this time just wanting to hold these crossfires let Revan make the mistake of coming to them again good the patience we're seeing from Revan right now but the most important thing for Alpha to do themselves is to make sure that they're working <laughs> out all the information they can get is going to benefit them Dion has actually made her way into piano that's Joe and Matumbo is very quickly going to fall back. He does not want to deal with it. Those are already taken pixel. Now the Solus swings out. And Matumbo goes down. Maybe uh, maybe he didn't know that he was already pushed up pixel. But there's two kills from Ivan and Fatal. The flank coming in from Cigar because Revan never cleared it properly. It's just Joe and Piano. And now everyone else on the team is falling around him. A 2v4 after that opening pick. Remember falling apart at the seams, Wrath and Joe, the only two members remaining, and only 45 seconds left. Joe's now in bathroom. He is very far forward. And their members from Ath Alpha Athera still downstairs, still on white. They could take the 2v2 on site and just hold the stairs. And it looks like that's what they might try to do. Wrath has some info. So does Joe. Down goes Nade. Joe's holding the staircase. Fatal dies on site. And now, what are these last two defenders going to do? Ivan's made his way up. He can start challenging, but he's got no help from Jay. This is a straight 1v1. The plant is going down from Rat. All Joe needs to do is hold on. No info for Ivan. Shot in the back by Joe. And Jay's the last one left. Wrath has absolutely no chance of letting that clutch happen. I think this is a problem for me right now. Revan, in theory, should not have won that round. <laughs> Alpha oh. had all the cards in their hands to win then. They had so much control, so much presence still. Revan couldn't even watch their flank. You know, their flank drone was either destroyed or maybe no one was checking it. We saw a 2k come through because of that. Pulled apart and still managed to salvage the round. Comfortable, but again, it, it's this idea that your your utility setup there is so basic, right? It's so stripped back. It's as I say, free operators that if they die, what else have you got on the table? All they had defending site then was ADSs and magnets, and that it for bar cocktail. That's a little bit silly sausages. I really like the flanks at the beginning of the round, and then. They paid the price because of the flank. They just didn't get back to site quick enough. They're gonna try bar again. Works out better this round. They've got Mira. They do. Actually forgot Mira was unbanned because we didn't see her played. Oh, they've got the bathroom Mira. Look, bathroom and freezer? Yeah, it looks like okay, it looks like they're setting up for the freezer Mira. Revan's got the Ying though. That's a pretty good Mira counter. They do. There's also a lot of, again, lots more utility now being brought to the table by Alpha. They've got the mute jammers. To keep some of these walls safe. Also deny a lot of information that Revan desperately needs to set up for these collapses. When you think about setting up for these collapses again to do the mirror window with those freezer setups. That is, as you say, it's the main thing you've got to try and get through. The ying, yes, it's there. But can Sam stay alive? utilize those candelas in order for them to go and it, again it's the issue you have to take those aggressive pushes they need to time right they need to have their three two ones on lockdown right now oh ivan's gonna try and run out on their fell players mm. impact on the bakery double sprint out see if you can find one of these bodies like joe who got three kills in the previous round he's doing a hell of a lot better than he did yesterday this pixel shield gonna be a bit of a headache the nade comes through. No ADS is protecting it. Matumbo has to fall back. Now Fatal's position here 
is on this mirror window is slightly more exposed and now there's no one else on the repels for the vigil run out on so it was a an opening for alpha theris to get that entry kill is now closed I feel like this is kind of quiet before the storm. Knowing how these two play, I feel like it's just going to get very explosive within this last minute. Certainly so as the timer ticks on. No real control game just yet. We do have runner below, so again, the verticality could come through if they want to use those breaching rounds. Try and knock someone a little oh, bit off guard. I think they are aware of the presence on white stairs. I think someone must have heard a little bit of rustling around reading. They've hightailed it out of their crow. Or have they? No, they haven't! They didn't know at all! And there we have it. Ivan is going to fall down. Matumbo falling too. Radius is looking very good for Revan. The Yinkandela is coming through. A trade comes through also. And that plant is going to start going down. There we have it. Revan, another round on the table. Slow and steady wins the race. So... They saw the mirror setup, they got themselves into piano, and then it looked like they swapped to more of a cocktail take. Kind of a cocktail, and I think Skylight dropped. They had the one guy holding below, where, by the way, Jay was playing earlier. I'm not sure why Jay fell back, but he did. That allowed Runner the, mo the, the room to move in, killed Ivan. They had no info. That's only off of Theris have been, have been kind of lacking on. They're not bringing the Valkyrie like, um, like Revan were for whatever reason. And those mirror windows, because now you're pushing Cocktail, are, are rendered useless. The Incandelas came through. I'm sure the mirror got one pick, but then she was full blind and easy pickings. And Revan collapsed expertly onto the site. Now they lead six to four. They're going back to mining. And just curiously, the only successful site that Alpha Theris have had so far. The key for them is going to be, can they hold on? Because this is indeed match point now, Crow. They need to try and pull it to overtime. They need to have a good start here. Yeah, and it doesn't look like they're going to risk any spawn peaks, which, you know, sometimes you do find desperate times call for desperate measures, and you do see people going a little bit more hyper-aggressive in those opening seconds. Alpha are themselves going to be slow and steady right now. Playing a little bit more sensibly. Lots of utility as well, thank goodness. I, I really do think they're going to go back and look at that round and be like, yeah, we didn't really have any utility set up on site. Now they've gone back to the sensible approach. Lots of Vulcans, lots of Magnets, Mute Jammers. The Rooney Gates as well, of course. Wow! Ooh. What a run out from Ivan, and he gets back in because there's no one with Joe on the balcony! That's pretty incredible. Runner's looking to walk up round. There's barbed wire mm. in his way, though, so as soon as he hits this, they're gonna know. This, what is going on here? Wow! Fatal gets the pick on the draw! With, I think, Matumbo proning under the head holes. Nay to follow up. Now, Sam and Wrath in a two versus four. Or, sorry, two versus five, looking to make it a two versus four, which they will. Nice little pinch there onto Nate, who is still upstairs in Shaiko. He was the last man upstairs. Now, a minute and a half for Revan to play with. While the man count's certainly not in their favor, it's a pretty decent amount of time. This is a thing for Sam and Rafe, it's kind of like, you've got to try and be sensible here, you can't really isolate yourselves. Looks like Sam may have given them a little bit of inkling that he's now lurking around this pillar's area. Prox Alarm certainly is going to do that too. It's where you need Rafe behind him to try to be trying to play maybe through these trades a little bit. Going for these plays as a duo, isolating into 2v1s. A little bit of a distraction there, potentially. Not sure what that's about. Rafe is going to take down Ivan, though. That's at least a start. Look at this. They're not even going to give Sam the pleasure of peeking for him. Fatal. There we have it. Taking out Rafe, but Sam is going to trade it back almost instantaneously. 
Then Bone J. Boo, Sam. Getting barbecued a little bit there, my friend. Beautiful shot by Matumbo to finish things off. Alpha edging themselves closer and closer towards potentially securing overtime here. Playing around their time delay really well in that 2v3. Uh, mm. I mean, first, the, the top floor hold. Slowing down Revan quite a bit, starting with that jump out and the two following picks. Um, huge, long, long sight lines. Uh, played expertly by Fatal on that DMR, you know, knowing the advantage he had. And now, you got to go back to the drawing board if you're the defense, though. Because you just won mining, but you know you can win. You have been unsuccessful literally everywhere else except Kitchen, where they haven't even tried to play, and now it's back to Bar, where they've lost twice in a row before going back to mining. And they've tried this mirror setup before. It didn't work. Revan know how to play against it, and I'm... Uh, I think they're probably going to lose the map off of this unless something drastic changes in, in how they play it. It's going to be the interesting thing to do, I do believe, if Revan can score this. They're still going to be starting on the attack on overtime, I believe. Revan have overtime attack for this, I yes. think. Yes, so... It's all kind of a coin flip how that will go if this does even go to match point. Again... Revan seem to be a bit more coordinated on these attacks, but it's just these little moments of confusing and perhaps unprepared uh, executes at times. Something else that's a bit surprising from Alpha Aceris is that, actually from both teams, it feels a lot more of an all-hands-on-deck game for Revan, right? Every single member positive, except for Runner, who's only minus one, and all within, you know, a relatively close, I mean, and nine, eight, seven, six. You can't get closer than that. Revan have played around each other really well, and Alpha Theris, it's mainly been Ivan. He's, I think, uh, five and one on the entry right now. Then you got Matumbo. Oh, and three. Uh, fatal, I think, 0 and 1. And these guys who we expect to be massive players, you know, including Nade, are, are, are really lagging behind. And uh, against a team like Revan, you're going to get really punished for that. You know, the runners entering Bolo, and again, I just want to see what I kind of wanted last time when they approached this. You know, runner got reading control, but we didn't really see a lot of use out of those breaching rounds. I said they chose to take that gunfight on white, which granted got them the kill, opened them a bit of breathing space. But sometimes you can snack yourself a few little bits of freebies, you can clear some of this utility underneath as well. But speaking of underneath, like a shark in the water, Jay just waiting right now. Patience again. Patience is a virtue, Crow. Ooh, I think that's the first kill on Joe. Where the heck did he get that? Did Joe just drop? I certainly hope not. Maybe he killed him on the hatch. That could That's a possibility, too. Jay was playing downstairs in that previous bar cocktail uh, defense with the mirror up, but he fell back. Ivan is still challenging this hatch, and he eventually dies to draw, who now makes his way in. So they go one for one, but an Oryx for an Iana, and with only 30 seconds left, that's pretty good for the defense, but now the Candela is starting to be thrown in. First one popped by the ADS. The swing from the Mira catches Draw, who's just exposed to heaven and not looking at it at all. More Candelas, more smokes, but Runner dies to the man oh, below. Oh, Sam can't make oh, his way in, and it's oh. all over. Alpha Etheris adapting wow. to the attack. And the answer was aggression from the Oryx to delay. Still having a player underneath, which I'm very glad stay, uh, Jay stuck around. And then just simply letting them have the cocktail control that they want. Overtime, baby! The stuff you love to see. Alpha doing Ooh, such a good out. job there as well of just snaggling up. Making sure they can get this to 6-6. Six, six. Here we go. Again, starting on the defensive side for this, so they have the more favorable position. 
Concerning for Revan though, Crow, again, this is their map pick. Uh, we both discussed this in quite depth. We also discussed this on uh, broadcast for the viewers, but if Revan's best chance of winning this best of three, we both agreed was them winning this map, right? Mm hmm But Alpha, so, I mean, again, just in general, so far in this tournament, they've been amazing. They've been so good. Like, it's unreal. Some questionable operator picks on this map, though. I'm thinking if they were a little bit more sensible, if they weren't making some of those choices, I'm wondering how the scoreline would look right now. Would it have already been over for Revan? Revan really needs to put their nose to the grindstone. <laughs> I think we're going back to mining, too. Hi, yeah, my we mining. are. Saw it on, uh, yeah, the Spanish, I think it said, like, my, like, Mineria or something, or Mineta. So I was like, yeah. That sounds like English <laughs> for mining. We're slowly learning Spanish. <laughs> no, it, I mean, it said 2F, so it had to be reading or mining, and the fact it said, you know, Mineta. That was kind of a dead giveaway. <laughs> Joe's, uh, by the way, Joe's survival rate? Pretty good. Can you believe he survived? He's beaten his record from yesterday in just the first map. Improvements. Absolutely. Yesterday, he only survived two rounds. Today, four. Just in the first map. Oh! All right, it's overtime, and you're gonna wow. you're gonna do that. You're gonna blind fire spawn peak with an unsuppressed weapon. Interesting. I think we've already seen Fatal go for something a little bit risky there. Nade trying it too, but Runner having the intel is able to shut that down. But Revan really need to make use of the fact that the opening pick has gone in their favor. This is where they can take a little bit of a breather. Okay, we've got the player advantage. Just take the slow and steady now. Drona out slow and steady. I think Ivan is pretty aware that's how they're going to do it. So they're going to fall back. Hold these angles. Let them come into Cigar. Where things can get pretty uh -oh. nasty. There we have it. Draw takes down Ivan. No one's there for the trade. A solo roam. Joe's going to take down Fatal as well. They're shut down by Matumbo. Where things start to get a little bit dicey, a crow. Yeah, Alpha and Theris can't be... Can't afford to be losing those opening picks like that. So far this game... With the exception of round number two, where Ivan got the entry kill onto Joe and they still lost that kitchen attack, every single round has been won by the team who gets the opener. So Alpha and Theris, they can't risk losing these early engagements. And there it is, the trend continues with the finish off from Runner. I mean, Revan were gifted a freebie, and then it seems like Alpha and Theris, when they lose that opening pick and, and they don't trade it, they feel like they have to get more aggressive to make up for it. They have to make a play to get that man count back in their favor. And every time, Revan has been ready for it. But I also don't think it helps that I believe it was Matumbo getting air jabbed back into the fire of his own teammate's utility. It was a 1v4, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> never say never, though. It's the thing. Never say never. Sometimes we get these insane clutches. Just did. Twice. <laughs> Am I am I being too spoilt here? You hypocrite. Am I being too spoilt? Am I requesting it too much? Is that, is that what's happening? Yeah. I see, I see, I see, I see. What I also see is uh, Alpha Theris' worst attacking site. I That's mean, what yes, I'm seeing. But granted, you know they're bringing the butt and the sledge. They're not bringing the ash. They're being a bit more sensible. Thank they got God. the skeleton key and that sledgehammer to work that verticality. And of course, the secondary sh uh, shotty on the jackal. But well as all that global utility, the intel, intel gathering. So I like the operator setup we're seeing from Alpha already. Right, I think well, they are very much aware of the fact there's that. There's Ash. <sighs> I'm shaking my head, Crow. <laughs> Why are they doing this? At this point, just. Take upstairs and go for bake, dude. You have not won this white clear ever. There are. Th They're gonna do it again. They're gonna do it again. I 
I, I agree that they need to focus on taking bakery more. You know, this freezer setup, they've had a lot of difficulty with it. Every single time they've tried to do it, it hasn't worked out. Try something different. Take that Verti, get in mining and train, open those floorboards up, and just take bakery. Or don't have someone just sit outside garage doing nothing, bro. All hands on deck. Clear. As a team, you need the manpower. At least they forced Joe back, so there's one. There was someone else on Brownstairs, but I'm sure with Joe falling back, you know, they're probably gone too. Mm. So you've dealt with the upstairs extension. Great. Epic. And here we go. Okay. Matumbo? Outside bakery? Are they gonna are they gonna switch to a bake push? Potentially, his hoping for Nalvo. And most of that middle floor control. Slowly starting to make their way downstairs. Are they aware here of Joe in cloak though? Cloak? Just cloak. Coat? Oh my goodness, okay. Here Coat we go. Check? <laughs> There Let's we have home. it. Fatal getting a pick. The trade comes through. Four by four already. The things get exciting. Runner taking down Matumbo. It's even falls also. It's looking very good for Raven right now. Can they secure this? Can they take map number one? Only time will tell of it. Where are they? Where are they all dying at? Outside Bake, I think. And now getting killed by the Vert. Well. They did what we wanted. They just did it poorly. And a uh, quick crossfire there. Revan, taking this map, I would say... I wouldn't say dominantly, of course, because it did go to overtime. But the trend in which they were winning rounds, I would say was far more confident than Alpha Theris, right? Alpha Theris only had one solid site that was mining and fireplace. They went to Cocktail three times and only one at the third time after they finally